Were you ever in a situation that you had to call multiple methods on the same input after one another, but each of those could potentially throw an exception? Especially if each method can throw different types of exceptions, or you want to perform a different action for each invocation, this quickly leads to ugly looking code like this. Ugh. But fear not, as there's a nice solution that I'm going to show you today. Since version 1.3, the Kotlin standard library offers a great built-in solution to this problem that allows us to transform this horrible code right here into way better looking and easy to maintain code like this. Meet the result mechanism of Kotlin, through which I will guide you in today's episode of Idiomatic Kotlin. Occasionally when programming, we want to process some data in a way that can fail and thus cause exceptions. Take the early example of reading a file from disk. Specifically, once we have to read multiple files, the code becomes pretty ugly quickly. But now consider this even bigger problem. What if one of the requirements was that we want to return to the caller of this method not only the contents of each file, but also if we could not do it due to a failure, and if so, why we could not? Now it becomes really ugly if we would maybe start returning a nullable exception to the caller, indicating that if the value is null, that no exception occurred, and in the case that an exception is present, then that particular file could not be read. However, this of course mandates that we now also make our files return contents nullable, as we can obviously not guarantee anymore with this step that we could read anything for a file that failed to be read entirely. If you think this is horrible, consider how it must be for the caller of our new method. The logic of figuring out which files fail to be read without any content and which files could be read with a string returned representing its content is pushed up the call chain to the poor caller of our read files method. Let's see where the result mechanism comes into play now. In essence, it encapsulates the idea that we implemented here very poorly for ourselves, such that we bundle together the returned value of the operation, our string with the file's contents in this case, with a potential exception that might have been thrown in the case of a problem. Let's transform our code right here to use the result mechanism instead. Now we can entirely drop this awkward construct of nullable value and exception and simply return a result of string. On the caller side, the code now makes use of the onSuccess and onFailure methods instead of manually checking if the exception is present or not. Additionally, our call method gets to look a lot cleaner by leveraging the static runCatching function. The idea is that we can wrap our potential failing call with run catching, which will automatically take care of catching potential exceptions, remembering them and returning a new result. This means that a result of string can have a binary outcome of either a string or an exception. It is essentially a union type. Once we have a result, there are various ways to extract the success value or exception, such as the onSuccess and onFailure methods that simply execute the given lambda expression only in, well, case of success or failure, without any extra if statements required. We'll cover in a moment how exactly we can use this mechanism and what methods it offers. So what is the big deal, you might ask? It's a typical software engineering answer, as this covers two cornerstones of it, encapsulation and abstraction. Notice how the whole handling of the question if the action failed or was successful is nicely hidden away now behind this lean interface of just invoking on success and on failure. This is great for the caller as they do not have to concern themselves with this fact specifically anymore. Inside of our read files method, we could even entirely drop the notion of exception handling and leave that task to the result type. Both of these aspects on the caller and callee side are good examples of encapsulation. The abstraction that comes into effect here is the fact that we can use this with any kind of action, throwing any kind of exception, performed on any kind of data you could imagine. How awesome is that? And don't forget, we got all of this shipped for free with an installation of Kotlin. This is not even an external library. Now let's jump into the details of how you can use the result type in your own code. You can either use the result mechanism with the discussed run catching. That is in essence a try catch block around your lambda expression. If we check out the implementation, we'll see actually just that. The other option is to start with result.success, which just wraps the value in a result without an exception such that we can use it further. Why the heck would we do that though? Easy, to use the other big feature of the result. An important aspect we haven't seen yet is how to chain together multiple calls, which is one of the strong suits of the result type. 
Once we have a result, we can use a regular .map operation on it. The thing that is cool now, however, is that our lambda expression will only be applied if the result currently represents a success, otherwise the mapping is just skipped. It gets even better with map catching. If we know that the mapping can throw a new exception, this one will catch it and transform our result into one that now holds an exception and represents a failure going forward. Moreover, we can use recover as well as recover catching to go from a previous failure state back to a success. To do so, we receive the failure exception as an argument in the past in lambda expression and can return a value, for instance a build out of a field of the exception that is then carried on as a success value. Of course, opposite to the map method, the recovery will only be attempted if there was a failure beforehand, otherwise the method is short-circuiting and skips this step entirely. Finally, we have the onSuccess and onFailure methods that you have already seen. Together with various methods to convert the wrapped value, the t in result of t, into a regular value in case there is one available. This can be done in three ways. By just throwing an exception in case the result represented a failure, to define a default for the failure case otherwise returning the success value, or to receive a nullable value representing null for failure and non-null for success. There are a few more methods available that we sadly do not have time to cover today. However, you can find all of them in the Kotlin documentation, of course. Now you might say, this is nice and well, but I still don't really know how to use this stuff. So if you're still not 100% certain about the result type in Kotlin, or simply would like to see another way more in-depth real-world-esque example, then make sure to watch the appendix, the second part, to this episode, where I refactor non-idiomatic code into idiomatic Kotlin code leveraging the result mechanism. Apart from that, I can, as always, of course, only recommend to try this stuff out for yourself. Let me know in the comments if you are already using this mechanism or if you intend to do so now. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like, consider subscribing to the channel for many more videos like this one, and finally, the only thing that's left for me to say is that I see you in part 2 to this episode, or the next time we are looking at more idiomatic Kotlin. Tschüss! Thank you.